Mars moves into Cancer September 5th, activating deeply sensitive family and home karma personally and activating issues of patriotism, nationalism, and homeland security collectively. Hello, my name is Eliane Nicole. I'm your astrologer and tarot reader. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a very significant transit, Mars into Cancer, which will be happening from September 4th, 2024, all the way until April, 2025. And that's part of the reason that it's so significant because Mars usually just spends six weeks in a sign but because it's going to go retrograde in the sign of cancer, this is going to become a much longer storyline in our personal lives, as well as for the collective, meaning that cosmically, spiritually, there are some very important lessons that we're going to have um, in this area of our chart and therefore in this area of our lives. So before I begin my complete interpretation, I just want to say I'm only going to post the first five minutes of this talk on my Instagram channel, and the entire talk will be available on my YouTube channel, Elian Nicole. My YouTube channel is my name, Elian Nicole, so please find me there. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. Please subscribe, please like, please comment, please share to help me in the algorithm so I can continue to give these free astrological offerings. If you are watching on Instagram, please make sure that you are following astrology.tarot.elianicole. Please like, please um, share, please comment. It's free for you to do that, and it's very helpful to me in the algorithm. And now I'm going to give my translation. So Mars, the planetary warrior, the planetary soldier, the god of war, is considered in its fall in Cancer because Cancer is the cardinal, watery, um, yang temple of the moon and so the moon has to do with our emotional landscape the moon has to do with the mothering principle and the nurturing principle whereas mars is all about war and action and fighting and aggression and so you see how these two energies don't necessarily go together well so on a personal level this is like can represent like the mama bear archetype a very protective mothering energy which has a time and a place that can be very useful but sometimes that can be a very overbearing energy as well you know on the other hand it can be like the sensitive warrior um or you know the um you know sensitive gangster or something like that you see how those energies don't necessarily match. It's not that they're bad in any situation, but um, it can be a difficult place for that energy to exist. And um, this transit will very be very personal to people who have a Scorpio rising or an Aries rising because these are Mars ruled people. Um, and for anyone who has a lot of placements in any of the cardinal signs, this will be a more difficult transit. Whereas if you have a lot of placements in the water signs, there could be times where this transit comes in very handy for you and um, where you experience a lot of flow and um, kind of empowerment from this transit when it's at an exact degree to your personal planets. Again, on the personal astrology level, it's going to be different for everyone depending on your own personal astrological coding. And that's why it's always get good to get a reading one-on-one -on -one with an astrologer. 
I would love to read for you. Um, I read on Zoom, so I can read for people anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. You can find my information of how to contact me for a reading on my socials. I definitely encourage you to reach out to me because um, this transit will have, you know, many phases between now and April um, as it will go all the way through Cancer, then go into Leo, then retrograde and come back through Cancer then go back into Leo and back through Cancer. So I'm gonna call this a part one video. Um, and I'm going to come back and I'm gonna break this down into sections because it's a lot to take in, especially for people who aren't as familiar with the language of astrology. And right now I primarily wanna talk about part one, which is from September 4th to November 3rd as Mars travels through Cancer uh, going forward. And um, again, you know, on the personal level, this can be mama bear energy, very protective energy. Um, the best of Mars and Cancer is advocacy. Mars can be the advocate. And when it's in Cancer, it's advocating for mothers, adv advocating for families you know, advocating for topics like, you know, um, domestic abuse or violence against women or, you know, situations like that. Um, but at worst, it can be an attack on these topics, an attack on women's issues. Uh, you know, it can represent domestic violence. You know, there's always both sides of the coin because everything in our 3D reality is on a spectrum. Um, now on a collective level, cancer rules the homeland. It rules our ancestry. It rules our bloodline, you know, our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents, etc. And so Mars being the God of war, it can be conflicts or challenges around these areas, you know, homeland security. Um, and so it can bring up nationalism and patriotism and things like that. So you can see how during this time we can be dealing with a lot of these type of issues. Um, I think the overall lesson, because it's here for such a long period of time, are lessons around how to regulate our emotions, emotional healing and families, um, developing stronger intuition personally, um, developing more emotional maturity, uh, developing, raising our emotional quotient, our EQ, which is very different than our IQ, which is about the intellect. The EQ is very important as well. So um, Mars and Cancer tends to be passive aggressive, not direct. Mars and Cancer can bring up defensiveness. Mars and Cancer can be emotionally embattled, emotionally reactive. Uh, Mars and Cancer tends to have very great instincts, but it can bring about mood swings um, and just conflicts or challenges around nurturing and protection of mothers, families, the home environment. On a health level, it can, um, allude to surgeries around the breast or the stomach or the feminine areas. It can bring up issues like abortions or miscarriages, women's health issues, maternal health issues. Um, conceptually, it can bring up issues around home invasions or home security. Um, sometimes just on the most mundane level, Mars will represent itself as car troubles. You know, you're buying a lemon, you know, you're dealing with a lot of issues with your car, um, purchasing a defective car, perhaps. Um, again, advocacy around women's rights, children's white rights, domestic abuse, conflicts or challenges around the hospitality industry. Um, Mars and cancer is hot tubs, it's pots of boiling water. Um, you know, Mars and Cancer is strong in athletes that do water athletics, like swimming or diving. Um, and on the same token, it's a good time to 
gain strength around your core in athletics or to participate in those types of athletics. Um, it can bring challenges or real estate or, or, or conflicts around real estate or home renovations because cancer rules the home. For the collective, again, it's very connected to patriotism, tribalism, nationalism, homeland security, danger or conflicts around beaches, uh, water injuries, conflict or challenge in the hospitality industry. I may be repeating myself. Um, during the retrograde period, I think I'm gonna talk about the retrograde period later um, in another video. Um, but I just want to talk about a few of the transits that we're going to go through between now and November 3rd for part one. On September 15th, Mars and Cancer will be in a T-square with the nodes of fate. And this is a karmic turning point. And this is going to affect people personally who have planets at the exact degree of this transit. But in general, you know, this is, this is a faded choice. Um, and we're talking about karma and, you know, possibly from past lives, but also around cycles from nine years or 18 years that are coming up. And with cancer in a T-square with the nodes of fate, it can have a lot to do about um, with you know, relationships, a letting go, um, and our new direction in life um, as an individual, what's best for us in, as an individual versus what's best for our relationships. Um, and these, because it's in Cancer and Mars, these are usually deeply sensitive issues, deeply emotional issues that we're having to make faded choices about, and it has to do with family karma, karma around the parents, around mothers, around the home. And so, um, yeah, that's September 15th. On September 29th, it's trine Saturn, um, where there is a lot of flow. There is um, the ability for um, very strong emotional intelligence here. Um, and emotional maturity. Um, this can be, um, you know, depending on where it is in your chart, this could be very strong for um, what we're doing in our work, very strong creatively for artists. Um, again, these are things that I'm just giving a general overview um, because um, it affects people differently depending on where it is in your chart. The square to Chiron on October 13th can be very triggering to our deepest wounds. Again, there's a lot here about family karma, karma around the parents, karma around mothers. Um, the sextile towards Uranus October 24th is very creative. It's very fertile. Um, it's coming up with um, very creative solutions and original, unique solutions around family and home life. Um, the sextile to Uranus. Um, and then again, for our individual lives, it's different than for our collective's lives. For the collective, there is a lot up around homeland security. For personal, it, there's a lot around home security. So you see how it parallels, even though it's a little bit differently personally and collectively. Um, the trying to Neptune, October 28th is very um, compassionate. It's very generous. Um, it's very um, empathetic. Um, the opposition to Pluto November 3rd is very concerning and um, on a collective level. Um, I do find this to be a very sensitive point for um, America. I don't know exactly how it's going to translate. It looks like the possibility of extreme civil strife or else an attack from an outer force onto our American soil. America 
has a stellium in the sign of Cancer, so the Cancer energy is very sensitive to America. As Mars, Mars, the god of war, is debilitated in Cancer, opposing Pluto at the 29th degree at America's Pluto return. This feels like it is a very, very specific transit to things going on in America. Um, and it definitely um, just looks like it, it threatens our homeland security, either from an external or internal source. So that's something to be aware of. Um, and I don't know, I kind of just sped through the transits. I will probably go through them in greater detail as they come along. Um, but the ones that I'm, you know, there's both positive and negative. Again, if you have a lot of placements in cardinal signs, this Mars in Cancer story from September to April is going to bring up some really difficult family karma that needs to be dealt with, some deeply emotional and sensitive issues, um, giving us a chance to work on our emotionally reactive nature, giving us a chance to work on our emotional intelligence, um, giving us a chance to work further on our emotional maturity. If you have a lot of water placements, um, you know, this Mars and Cancer could provide a lot of emotional support around these topics, um, even though um, they may be difficult. Or you could be finding yourself in a position where you are able to advocate for others in a very powerful way around these topics, um, where you are able to protect and nurture and guide others around these topics. So there's always like, you know, the highest like vibration of these energies and then the lower vibration of these energies. Or I don't even want to judge it in terms of high and low because it's all necessary for our emotional growth. Um, but Mars and Cancer can tend to bring up more difficult, challenging topics around family, around home, around parents, around mothers, around, you know, and, and sometimes it's very mundane, like sometimes it has to do with our physical reality, like our house or our car. Mars rules cars, Cancer rules homes, you know, but sometimes it gets more deeply personal, like our body. In the body, cancer rules the breasts and the stomach. Mars rules knives and guns. You know what I mean? And so depending on how the archetype arranges in our personal astrology, it can present in very many different ways. And then the collective experience is even different because rather than dealing with our own personal home, we're dealing with the homeland, we're dealing with our ancestry, we're dealing with our country. And so there's a myriad of ways for the energy to express. Um, I think astrologers tend to focus on the more difficult aspects, but I think the, you know, the harmonious aspects are important too because they lift us up, they give us hope, they give us the light at the end of the tunnel, they make us happy. Um, and so, you know, it's important to look at both. I would love to read for you and look at where cancer is moving through your chart um, and to see how it's interacting, Mars and Cancer, how it's interacting with your personal planetary placements. Um, again, you can find my information on, on my socials. Um, I hope that this video was helpful. I welcome feedback on, you know, what you want to hear more of, what you want to hear less of. I know it's a lot of information to take in. Um, thank you for joining me and happy Mars and Cancer.